Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now, quite a long time ago, it has actually been about a year, I made a whole series about building my own CNC machine. And this series has had a lot of success on this channel. It's like, they're all one of my pop most popular videos. And they got a lot of great reviews of people liking it and being inspired and building their own stuff. The one question that keeps coming is about the electronics. They just don't seem that approachable. And to be completely honest, I just rewatched my video about it and it's pretty terrible. So in this video I'm gonna attempt to explain to you how the electronics in a DIY CNC machine work. Now let's start at the basics. What do we need? We have our computer where we have our generated G-code that we have from our CAM. That's the software you use to generate the machine code. And on a computer we have a software that sends this G-code onto the controller of the machine. That software in many hobbyist cases is Mach 3 or Mach 4 if it's newer, or it could also be something like Universal G-Code Sender, or there are other applications out there as well. And then this software usually is interfaced either via USB to like an Arduino or a newer modern board, or it uses a parallel port to a breakout board. The parallel port usually is used in conjunction with Mach 3. Now of course with modern computers they don't have a parallel port anymore, so we'll, you will just need a USB to parallel adapter. But they aren't expensive at all, so that's not a big deal. And then the controller itself is kind of the brain of your CNC router. This is where the G-code commands come in and it tells all your other electronics of the CNC machine what to do. Now I already touched on the different controllers. I myself am using an Arduino as a controller, which works great. I'm using the Gerbil firmware on that. We're gonna have Gerbil stuff linked down below. There's a forum about it. And it's basically just some software you put on the uh, Arduino and then you don't have to do any coding on the Arduino itself. It just runs on there. And the other even more popular thing are just cheap breakout boards for the parallel port to the Mach 3 interface. These, you, you can pick these up for like 10, 20 bucks online from China somewhere, or you can spend a bit more money to get something a bit more credible. And these really basically are what they are named after. They're breakout boards. They are very rudimental, they don't do much thinking. They just take the signal from the parallel port and then send it out to whatever uh, electronics you have connected. And then the main electronics you will have connected are the motor drivers for your stepper motors. Now these stepper drivers, they are all a bit different depending where you buy them from, how much amperage they can deliver, what kind of motors you use. But generally, they have like a low voltage side, that's where you connect it to your controller. And they have like a high voltage side, that's at least what they call it, where you have in the DC in, which is between 12 to 48 volts usually. That depends on what kind of stepper driver you have and also on your steppers, how much voltage you can use. And they also have the four outputs for the steppers. Most stepper motors have usually have four or six wires but in general you're probably gonna use four. Those four wires are split up into two coils inside of your motor. And if you don't know which wires belong together, you can just use a simple multimeter to check that. Just check where there is a connection, cause a coil is just a wire, so there should be very little resistance and between the two different coils there shouldn't be a connection at all. So that's pretty easy to figure out. And to recap real quick, you have four wires from your stepper motor to your stepper driver that are split up into two coils that go into the designated ports there. There also is external power coming in between 12 and 48 volts usually for your stepper motors. That is the high voltage side of your stepper driver. Now, on the low voltage side of the stepper drivers, you have three pairs of connectors. You have enable, you have direction, and you have the pull speed. Now enable is just what the name says, it enables the motors. So in case of the Arduino, 
you can combine all your enabled pins into one cable and just plug that into one designated pin. I'm gonna have the pinout sheet for the Arduino linked down below. And if you use a different breakout board, just look up your breakout board online and you should find a guide where to plug in what. And then the second connection for enable, which is marked with a minus, you're just gonna connect to all the other minuses that you have there. That should be every other connection, three in total, which all go together to ground. And then you're left with two pins to plug in your controller, step pulse and direction. And you just plug them into the designated ports. So to recap real quick, I'm gonna put up a diagram right here that should explain to you. And if you're not quite caught up yet, just pause the video here and look at that diagram. And with that, we are done with the majority. Now to your controller, you can also hook up a bunch of other stuff. For example, you can hook up your limit switches if you decide to use them. They usually just plug into two pins on your breakout board or for the Arduino, which is like really easy to do. On some breakout boards, there also is a place where you can control your spindle. Now that's something that varies greatly what kind of features are implemented there. Now, what you will need in any case is that your breakout board is not gonna supply the power for your spindle. So usually you have something in between, like if it's just very simple, like I did it with my Arduino, you, you could just use a relay or you could, could use some more fancy electronics. And that usually either comes with your breakout board the information or you can use that with your spindle or I'm gonna have some stuff linked down below as well if I find some great information about that online. Now, what I forget to mention earlier is that the breakout board also requires power in most cases, but not the high voltage stuff like the 12 to 48 volt, it usually requires between five and 12 volts. So you will end up having two different power supplies or you just use a step down regulator, but it's probably a good idea to have two different power supplies just to play safe. So that is the basic overview. And I hope that I have made myself a bit clearer in this video. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you haven't seen my CNC video series, then make sure to check it out. It's gonna be the first link down in the description, also up in the cards and the end screen. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you're shopping online or shopping for CNC parts, make sure to use my affiliate links down below. They don't cost you any more money, but they do help me out a great bit. You can also check out my social media, link down below, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. So thanks for watching and until next time.